So now, here's the thing, right? I mean, what we just did now as a session, in my mind, that's what makes jujitsu truly accessible. So when we talk about making jujitsu accessible for everybody, that's the only way to do it. Otherwise, always what inevitably happens is if you don't put those kinds of safe, safeguards in play, what will happen is people will get competitive, ego will step in, and will always get to that point to who's, who's, who's tougher, who's better, right? So we'll talk about that in a bit. But let me, let me just first talk about this, which I think is really, really important. Now, one of the things that I'm always pretty big on is that I always like to think personally for myself, how, what I do on the mat, how does that apply or inform what I do in everyday life? That for me personally is probably the most uh, important thing, at least why I practice martial arts. Now, I, I, I'm lucky that I happen to do it as a living, but even if I wasn't doing it as a living and this was something I did part-time, I don't think that my approach would be any different. My mindset would be pretty much the same. If I get on the mat and I do these things, how does it apply to the everyday life? Right, so the first thing we said was that, you know, by playing like we did now and you know, just focusing on the movement more than say the strength and so forth and then you are put in a position that you have to move, one of the consequences of that is, is that you are building movement patterns that allow you to move in life more effectively. So that be walking up a staircase or picking up a heavy object because you're strengthening your entire body. It allows you to be more functional in life and of course from a health perspective that's very, very important. Right. Going on, that's not always really evident in the beginning until it's pointed out. In order to achieve any success in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or any success in a stand up game, we're just talking purely martial arts, right? I don't care where you are in the fight game, if you want to achieve success, it really comes down to one idea, and that idea is about taking risk. It's about taking risk because you have to take risk in order to achieve success in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Is that only true for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? If you, in a, if you say, in an entrepreneurial environment, or you're in a teaching environment, and you're teaching other people, and you want them to stretch themselves, and you want them to become more, one of the things that you're asking of them is to take risks. Okay, and what, is, what are some of the consequences of taking risk? If you take risk, it opens up the avenue for creativity, right? And so, actually, those two things go hand in hand. If I want to be creative, and we can argue that one of the things that is required in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to be really good at this is to be creative. And that could be creative in my movement patterns, could be creative in my mindset and how I look at a problem and how I overcome it. It means I have to be adaptable. So, creativity and risk are very closely related. You can't separate those two things up. And if you think about, say, marketing, entrepreneurship, from a business environment, because that's my education coming from a business environment, and you listen to kind of the latest guys on the block talking about all the stuff like Seth Godin, Scott Stratton, John Michael Morgan, these are the guys that are kind of the, 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 the pioneers in marketing and business in this day and age, not the old school guys, the new, new kids on the block. One of the things they're going to always talk about, one of the things they're going to say is that you can never achieve any success without taking risks. but in the process you messed up and you put your arm in there. I get, I'm a real jerk, I get hold of the arm and I pop it off. Now your arm's broken. There's a very good chance that you'll never do jiu-jitsu again. Your jiu-jitsu career is over. One day, and that's it. Never do it again. So, taking risk is important, but also, you know, when you're taking the risk, there shouldn't be this kind of consequence that if you did take the risk, 
it's so large that you can never play the game again. So the only way to get around that would be that we would have to play. Because by playing and taking out, of, taking out these things that make people not want to take risks, things like the fear of injury, the fear of be getting beaten or looking bad in front of others, have this consumed kind of thing of never, of, of the fear of failure, right? Everybody's scared to do something in case they fail. Right, but the, again, we come back to the same discussion. If I want to be successful at something, I have to go in there knowing that the possibility of failure is always there. It's always real, it's always possible. Because if I don't want to go down that road, and I'm always going to shy away from anything that has any chance of, 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 of failing, then I will never get myself to the point where I'll be successful. Because in order to overcome any possibility of failure, I'm also going to have to take risk. So again, inherent in risk is also failure, right? So by the way that we set up the process today, I said, okay, let's play. We took out some of the major components that would make people not want to play. And one of the things that's going to make you not want to play is somebody who just wants to smash you on the mat. So if every time you step on the mat, I touch hands with you and I go A game on you and I smash you, get you into my favorite position, the sage cross side, and I hold you there and I tap you out 25 times. What did you learn from that experience? Well, you learned how to tap. You learned how it is to be stuck on the bottom and not be able to go anywhere. But there is no way in there that you can develop a game. So what I need to do then, if I'm a really good coach, is I need to create an opportunity for you to take some risk, which means that you're going to have to do what? Move and try something out. But in the process of you doing that, the consequences of trying that move, the payoff shouldn't be so large that you can't play the game again. Right? So what I might do then is I eradicate my, my ability to tap you out, take the submissions out. Or maybe I'll loosen up the position a little bit more so I don't hold you. So what we do is we take manage, manageable risks. Risks that I can afford to take would allow me still to play the game. What does that do for you over time? Well, one of the things it's going to do is it's going to increase your confidence. You're going to get more confidence. And if you get more confidence, then you're willing to do what? Take more risk. And if you're willing to take more risk, then you're willing to be more creative. Because you're willing to take more chances. And you realize that actually, you know, failure Making a mistake is part of the learning process and is part of the success path. Because unless you are making mistakes and failing, you can never make any adjustments. You can't change anything if you don't know what to fix. Right? So we've been brought up in an environment, especially in the Western world, where Failure is always seen and we looked at as a negative. And we put people into a position that we say they should never fail. And by, the, by, by just doing that, we create people that are essentially just robots. And no wonder that there are very few people in life that set any goals and then achieve it. And we all know about the New Year's resolution, right? Everybody has New Year's resolutions uh, a couple of weeks in, and you've got to New Year's resolutions, right? And part of that is that more than anything else is that you also have a fear of success. Because you think, well, if I actually do achieve this, then I might have to change other things. So it comes with more responsibility. So it's this vicious cycle that we get into. So one of the more appropriate ways to approach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, or even stand-up, it doesn't make any difference, is to have a play ethic. An idea of coming in and playing with manageable risks, but allow me to continue the game.